Hello and welcome to another video on SIRDS and in this video we're going to take what we know about expanding and simplifying expressions and what we know about SIRDS and we're going to combine them together. So I've got two examples of expanding brackets with SIRDS that I'm going to go through with you and then I've got some questions for you to have a go at yourself. So the first question we've got 2 root 3 outside the brackets and then inside the brackets we've got 3 root 2 plus root 3. So what this means is this 2 root 3 is being multiplied by everything inside the brackets. So we're going to first we're going to multiply it by 3 root 2. And then once we've done that, we're going to multiply it by root 3. So let's do the first part. So 2 root 3 times 3 root 2. If we do the numbers first, or I should say the integers first, 2 times 3, well that will give us 6. And then we've got root 3 times root 2, well that will be root 6. So it's going to be 6 root 6. And now if we look at the part in blue, so 2 root 3 times root 3. Well root 3 times root 3 is 3. And then we're going to multiply that by 2, or well that will be 6. So it's going to be 6 root 6 plus 6. And this is our answer. Okay, let's look at the second example. And this one's slightly different because we've got a double brackets here. And with uh, when you're expanding double brackets, there's a couple of methods you can use. A lot of people like to use the FOIL method. So let me just write that down over here. So the FOIL stands for first, outside, inside, last. So that just means that we multiply the first two terms together. Then we multiply the outside terms together. Then we multiply the inside terms together. And finally, we multiply the last terms together. So there are four things that we need to multiply. Um, but the method that I prefer is the grid method. So with the grid method, we're essentially doing the same thing, but we're just setting it out in a grid. So let's first of all do 1 times 1. Well, that's nice and easy. That just gives us 1. And then if we do 1 times negative root 6, that will be negative root 6. And then if we do 1 times root 6, well, that is just root 6. And finally, root 6 times negative root 6. Well, it's going to be negative. And then root 6 times root 6 is just 6. That's going to be negative 6. So we have expanded our brackets, but we do need to simplify. We can simplify this expression. So first of all, if I just write down all of the terms, so we've got 1 minus root 6, and then plus root 6, and then minus 6. But notice, we, the middle two terms will cancel out. Negative root 6 plus root 6 is 0. So these two terms will just cancel out with each other, and all we're left with is 1 minus 6, which is negative 5. And this is our final answer. So from all of this business up here, which involves thirds, our final answer is just an integer because these middle terms will cancel out. OK, I've got seven questions for you to have a go at. So please pause the video and give these a go yourself first. OK, I'm assuming you've paused the video, so let's go through them now. So question one, we've got root two multiplied by all of this business. So we're going to multiply root two by root three first. Well, that will give us root 6. And then we're going to multiply root 2 by 5. Well, that will be 5 root 2. We can't sort of simplify that anymore. 5 times root 2 is just 5 root 2. So it's going to be root 6 plus 5 root 2. And that is our answer. OK, question 2. So this time we're going to multiply root 5 by everything in the brackets. So root 5 times 3 root 2. Let's do the numbers first. So we're going to have 3. And then root 5 times root 2, well, that is root 10. So it's going to be 3 root 10. And we've got minus. And then root 5 times root 5, well, that is just 5. So it's going to be 3 root 10 minus 5. OK, question 3. Now we've got root 27 times root 2. Now, we could, there's a few ways we could do this. We could just multiply 27 by 2 and say root 54. So we could say root 54, but that is not fully simplified. Root 54, we can simplify this. So instead of doing root 27 by root 2, first of all, I'm going to simplify root 27 because this does simplify. Because I, I know that the square root of 27, well, that is the same as the square root of 9 times 3. And... That is the same as the square root of 9 times the square root of 3. I'm just using my third properties. 
and I know that the square root of 9 is 3. So this is the same as 3 root 3. So root 27 is 3 root 3. So I'm just going to get rid of all of that and write 3 root 3. So I'm just going to change the question now. It's going to be 3 root 3 times all of this business. Root 2 plus root 3. Okay, because these two things are exactly the same. And now let's multiply. So we've got 3 We've just got the number 3. We don't have any numbers here. So we've got 3. And then root 3 times root 2 is root 6. So this simplifies to 3 root 6. And if you did have root 54, if you did do it the other way, um, where you multiplied root 27 by root 2 and got root 54, and then simplified this, it would lead you to 3 root 6. Okay, and now the second part is to multiply 3 root 3 by root 3 and you can see why I've simplified it now is because it makes this bit a bit easier because I can see that root 3 times root 3 is just 3 and then 3 times 3 is 9 so this is just going to be plus 9 so this is our final answer so my advice to you whenever you've got sort of something like this is to simplify it first and then multiply okay moving on to question 4 so this time we've got double brackets. So all of these ones here, we've got two sets of brackets. And I think for all of these, I'm going to use the grid method. And you can see that I've set out all of my grids first just to save a bit of time. So the first one, I'm going to multiply 2 by 1, which is 2. And then 2 by root 3. Well, that's 2 root 3. Then I'm going to multiply 1 by root 3. Well, that's just root 3. And then root 3 times root 3, which is our outside terms. Well, that is going to be 3. So we've expanded our brackets and now we can simplify. So we've got 2 plus 3. Well, that's just going to be 5. And then we've got 2 root 3 plus 1 root 3. Well, that's going to give us 3 root 3s. So it's going to be 5 plus 3 root 3. Okay, question 5. So first of all, if we multiply 4 by 3, that gives us 12. And then if we do the outside terms, 4 times root 8, which is this, this box here, that's going to be, that would be 4 root 8. However, I'm going to simplify the root 8. So this root 8 over here, this can be simplified. I just noticed that root 8 can be simplified because the square root of 8 is the same as the square root of 4 times the square root of 2. And the square root of 4 is 2. So this is 2 root 2. So... I'm just going to change this root 8 to 2 root 2. And now I'm just going to carry on. So 4 times 2 root 2. Well, 4 times 2 is 8. So it's going to be 8 root 2. And now we've got 3 times negative root 2. Well, that is negative 3 root 2. And finally, we've got 2 root 2 times negative root 2. Well, it's going to be negative. I know that. And then root 2 times root 2 is just 2. And then if we multiply that by 2, that gives us 4. So that's going to be negative 4. And now we can simplify because we've expanded our brackets. 12 minus 4 is 8. And now if we deal with the third part, we've got 8 root 2 minus 3 root 2. Well, that will give us 5 root 2. So it'll be 8 plus 5 root 2. Okay, question 6. Now you need to be really careful with this one because we've got uh, five, root 5 plus root 2, all of that squared. A lot of people will be tempted just to square these individual terms in our expression. But no, you should remember that when you're expanding brackets where something is squared, you're multiplying this by itself. So we've got five, root 5 plus root 2 multiplied by root 5 plus root 2. So just be careful with that. So now if we um, multiply each term together, root 5 times root 5, well, that is just 5. Root 5 times root 2, that is root 10. And this is also going to be root 10 because it's exactly the same, just in a different order. And then root 2 times root 2, well, that will be 2. And now we can simplify. So 5 plus 2, that will give us 7. And root 10 plus root 10, or well, that is 2 root 10. So it will be 7 plus 2 root 10. Okay, the last one. Right, so we've got, let's first of all do this box here. So 2 root 3 times 2 root 3. Well, 2 times 2 is 4. 
and then root 3 times root 3, well that is just 3, so it's going to be 4 times 3, which is 12. So actually let me just get rid of that 4 and put in 12 there. And now we've got 2 root 3 times 1, well that's just 2 root 3. Negative 1 times 2 root 3, well that's just negative 2 root 3. And finally, 1 times negative 1, well that is just negative 1. So we've got 12 minus 1, which is 11. And then 2 root 3 minus 2 root 3, those two terms will cancel. So our final answer for this one is just 11. So this was the last question on this video. So hopefully uh, that helped you with your expanding brackets and multiplying thirds knowledge. Um, we've covered a lot on thirds, so you're probably getting quite tired of thirds, but there's two more videos that we're going to look at. We're going to look at dividing thirds because we haven't looked at that yet. And the last video is going to be some problem solving questions involving thirds, which are really important when it comes to the GCSE exam. So thank you for watching and have a great day. Take care.